ideally in the market, you want to get in and out at the right time. Now, market timing by itself is not exactly, I think, a, uh, an effective strategy because fundamentals are important as well. They're both important. But market timing is sort of the icing on the cake. If, you, if the fundamentals are right and you get in and out at the right time, then it's just going to accelerate what you're doing with fundamentals. So there are basically four phases of the real estate market. And we start with what's called buyer's market one. And this is what on the way down when supply is increasing relative to demand. Demand is decreasing as well. So supply is increasing, demand is decreasing. And basic economics, when supply is up and demand is down, prices are going to fall. Then we get to the bottom, which is an equilibrium point, which is called buyer's market two. And in the start of buyer's market two, supply is starting to stabilize, meaning the builders aren't building as much, and it's not as much for sale. Demand is still low, but it's not decreasing anymore. It's flattened out, and prices will have stabilized. That's the bottom of the market. On the way up, when we start to go up in the market again, we get to what's called seller's market one. Supply is lower relative to demand, demand is increasing again, and prices are starting to increase. So it's the opposite of buyer's market one. We're on the way up and prices are rising, we're in a hot market. Seller's market number two is the top of the curve. That's when supply is starting to increase, the builders built on the way up and now it's getting a little too much. Demand is starting to peak, prices are going to peak, Houses will be on the market a little longer. Prices haven't fallen yet, but because uh, demand is still high, uh, but it's kind of getting to the point where it's getting insane. And those of you who remember 2007, 2008, that was seller's market too. Things were about to crash. Properties were sitting a little longer. There was a little more supply. And you, you can kind of see the end coming. So ideally, we want to get in at buyer's market too and out at seller's market too. So we want to buy at the bottom. And then we want to obviously sell at the top. The only problem is they don't ring a bell at the top or the bottom of the market. So you have to use the information that you have at hand, the data, to make your best guess to get in near the bottom and get out near the top. Now, if we look at some of the housing stats right now, housing supply is at a record low, meaning builders stopped building in the late 2000s for a while. They're starting to build again. It's starting to creep up a little bit. But it is pretty low. If you, in most markets, the normal supply of housing is, you know, X number of houses on the multiple listing that the brokers use. We're at less than 50% of that normal in most markets. So housing supply is at a low. And when supply is low and demand is strong, then prices are going to go up. So that's where we are. Also, we have this interest rate curve, too, which is also at a record low. And two comments I want to make about that. One is, you know, the timing, if you want to buy not just at the bottom, but the bottom of the interest rate curve and lock in 30-year rates and interest rates go up, you're going to do really well. The other thing is, is that lower interest rates means more buying power. So you can ask more for a house and get it because the buyer's payment is going to be lower than it would be if interest rates were higher. Inflation is coming, and it's going to come with a vengeance. You know, all this debt that we've accumulated as a country is going to come back to bite us. And what happens when inflation comes up? It's going to push rents up. It's going to push interest rates up. So timing is very important. Rental vacancy is also at a record low. There are many more renters than there used to be. Remember when it was easy to get a loan with no money down and no proof of income? All the would-be renters became buyers, and it became very difficult to be a landlord during that time. Now it's the opposite. The buyers are very difficult to get financing, so they're stuck with renting, or maybe they had a foreclosure or a short sale, and now they're stuck with renting for a while. There's also this lack of affordable housing, which is kind of the sweet spot in real estate investing. If you buy expensive homes, um, you could buy and flip them, but if you buy an expensive home and try to rent it, you're not going to get as much rent per house as you would on the cheaper, the more, quote, affordable housing. I'm not talking about ghetto. I'm talking about what they call the working uh, lower middle class starter type neighborhoods. And, the, and that type of house, it really hasn't been built in most markets for 30 years, and in some markets as many as 50 years. I mean, when's the last time in your market you've seen three bedroom, two bath, 1,200 square foot ranches being built in mass in your market? Not at all. So this affordable housing, quote, crisis is, is a terrible thing for low-income people, but it's a great thing if you're a landlord, because if you've got this supply and they're not building any more of it, and there's a lot of renters, you're going to do very well. So the conclusion that I've come to, and that is pretty obvious, is that we're just past buyer's market number two in the market right now. We are here. We are you know, The bottom has already passed a year or two ago, and in most markets, we're on the way up. Now, 
where we are in that curve is different from market to market. Um, the markets that went boom and bust um, are a little behind the markets that kind of went up a little down a little over the last 10 years. So in markets like Denver, Atlanta, um, Dallas, Fort Worth, things didn't boom and bust like they did in Tampa, Vegas, Phoenix, and so forth. So those markets are a little behind, and but but all of the markets are past the bottom and, and then coming and creeping back into between buyer's market two and seller's market one. So we're near the bottom. Timing-wise, can't be a better time. Okay. The fact is, is that real estate will go up in value in the long run. It goes up and down in three, four, five, six-year cycles. But in the long run, 10 or 15 or 20 years, it almost always goes up without exception. And for those of you who would doubt that, I want you to think about this. How would you like to buy your parents' house, you know, the one that you grew up in, for the price that your parents paid for it now? <laughs> of course you would, because you know in the long term, the long run, almost without exception, real estate is going to go up in value at least the pace of inflation, and in many cases, much better. So the thing is, real estate will go up in value, and it'll go up in value whether you buy it or not. So is now a good time to buy? You better believe it.